Okay, there are several. So at the moment we're actually sat in a galaxy, so you couldn't see me waving the camera around. But if if you had, you'd have seen the stars. And these are really local. These are part of our galaxy. Um, however, there are other galaxies, and we've just finished taking a picture of one of them. There we go. So this is M82, and this is a sort of exploding galaxy. And the thing that makes this thing really special is, well, special-ish, is it's... You can look at the sky at various wavelengths, and if you look at the sky in the x-rays, this thing is incredibly x-ray bright. And the reckoning is there's lots and lots of supernova, um, not supernova, so sort of black holes um, in this in this galaxy. And that's why it's incredibly X-ray active. Anyway, I'm going to shuffle over to um, a galaxy that's really nearby it, called so that's M82. So I'm now going to go to M81. So first of all, let's align. Okay, now let's go M081. And let's just check that we're actually on it. So for this we will need our little toy. There we go. And let's do a two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, bollocks, I forgot. <laughs> I, I, I'm playing the lock-up trick to reduce the vibration. The mirror flipping up actually causes quite a lot of vibration. So by flipping the mirror up first, you don't get as much vibration on the shot. Okay, so let's see what that gets us. There's the core of it. That's pretty well centered. Okay, so that was 15 seconds. So now, let's see. Let me just put that somewhere where it's not going to, where I can put it down. And we will come back in 90 seconds. See what we got. Okay, I think we're coming up to the end of the exposure on M81. So this one is a much more regular sort of spiral galaxy. Okay, let's see what that does for us. Oh, that's much better. So you can now see all the sort of dust lane and structure in there. Yeah. So that's actually a fairly small but fairly bright galaxy. I mean, you can see it extends a long way out, but Let's try something that's a little more spectacular, like the Whirlpool Galaxy, that's M51, so that's now, look, here we're looking at it in an angle, with M51 we're looking at it face on. Okay, so we've got the glare of the moon coming up now, and we're just coming up to the end of the exposure on M51. So, this is actually two colliding galaxies. Um, and or two galaxies in the process of colliding and so let's see what we got oh isn't that pretty isn't that pretty so this is M51 and this is the galaxy it's colliding with that's fantastic okay Okay, we're back onto the globular clusters now. Now the globular clusters are much brighter. Um, they're actually they orbit the centre of our galaxy, um, and this one's M M M92. Uh, so you can see there's fantastic little balls of stars. You can actually have the focus. There you go. Fantastic little balls of stars. That's 
blow that. Oh, it's slightly out of focus. That sucks. Okay, that's genuinely moonrise now. Should be quite an impressive sight through the scalp once it's risen a little. Anyway, so here's another cap of M13. Better this time. So a little trailing, but not bad. casting ghostly shadows over absolutely everything so I can now see the trees and everything in there so mysterious great green light anyway telescope's now taking a picture of M57 which is the ring nebula it's a planetary nebula so when a uh, ah, here we go here we go ah. There's the ring nebula. Let me blow it up a bit. Evan, up we go. Fantastic. Right. So what you've got there is a star. Now, when stars collapse under gravity, or when gas collapses under gravity, it gets hot. And eventually it gets so hot that fusion starts. And that fusion um, generates a load of heat that keeps the star inflated. But obviously, it's a limited time in that as the fu fuel, as the fusion um, takes its course, it uh, runs out of fusible fuel. And when it does, the collapse just continues and continues and continues until you get. Um, uh, a couple of things that can happen this is one of the options which is for relatively small stars what happens is the center the majority just keeps on collapsing until um, it's as compacted as the electrostatic force will allow and in the course of this it generates a huge burst of heat which actually sheds off the outer layer of, of the star. So what you actually got here is the ring is the outer layer of the star that, have been, that has been thrown off and in the center you have the the remnant of the star which is basically as collapsed as it can get under gravity and there's no fusion to keep it puffed up anymore and that's called a white dwarf. So the uh, planetary nebula Okay, so we have the moon fully out. Do you want to take a look at it in a sec? And what we're currently looking at is the tail of the swan, or the head of the swan, depending on which way you look at it. Um, it's called Albirio. And if I do a two second exposure, what you'll find is Albirio is actually a double star. But not just any double star. What you'll find is it's two incredibly different coloured stars. One's bright blue and the other is is orange. They make an absolutely captivatingly beautiful pair, even in the most modest sized telescope. So yeah, look up look up the uh Albirio, head of the swan, well worth a look. So I've now pulled up Albirio on the live view settings. So that's probably about the nice wide space double. One bright orange, one bright blue. incredible sight. 
just to put all those galaxies and nebula that we've been looking at into perspective that's what the moon looks like at prime focus through this telescope that's it over there so but even though that this you can see it shimmers like a son of a bitch especially when you get over to the terminator <laughs> come on see how much that's shimmering it's a dismal sink <laughs> 